Yo, Dark Bleak, you won the giveaway from last week's video. Enjoy your trending list, comic fam. All right, another week, another list of the trending books in the comic book market. And I'm sitting at the table with an Overstreet price guide advisor. That's really big in comics, comic fam. I got Russ Bright. Hello, comic book fam. It is fantastic to be here this afternoon. I love doing this every single week with Tom. These trending comics are really the hot movers and shakers of the week. New comics, old comics. It's just a great thing, and we're glad you're here with us today. A lot of previews on this list. A lot of books I was kind of surprised to see here. Let's jump into it at number 10. But not before you hit that subscribe button and slap the like button. You know we got a giveaway on deck. Actually, three comics are going to go out to a really lucky person. Let's chat about number 10 on the list. Number 10 on the list, we have Gotham Academy number one. This is a book that not a lot of people have been thinking about recently, but we are currently seeing $25 raw sales and a high $30 sale for a CGC 9.6. Now, this book had just shy of 44,000 copies printed, so it's a relatively low print run book. A story about the day-to-day -day happenings at a school in Gotham City. And it's a fun read. It's a light read. Less mm -hmm. about the like impending doom and high-stakes stuff that's mostly found in DC narratives. And we have word from a tweet that we may have a new Robin entering as the new Dark Knight protege. So Gotham Academy artist Carl Kershaw tweeted some art from the new Batman Black and White over on Twitter featuring... Mia Mizaguchi as the new Robin the Girl Wonder, causing a whole lot of speculation to happen. We got to get more information on this tweet. And he was asked by fans, and this was his response. It's the real deal. I'm doing an eight-page Batman black and white story. This is a panel from the first page. So we're getting a first appearance of a new Robin, at least an intro in one panel. It may be the only thing found in this story. Who knows? But this is a great character. And if you've read Gotham Academy, you know that she is a fantastic number two to our protagonist in this run and a perfect person to take on the role as Robin. And I'll remind the community that in Gotham Academy, the second semester, the volume two, issue 11, when Maps, that's her nickname, actually finds herself in some danger, you have Damian Wayne who passes her the mask. And that moment of her taking on a superhero mantle Fans felt it way back when. It brought tears to people's eyes. So now that she's going to be getting a chance to be side by side with the Dark Knight, this matters to collectors. I'm going to be watching this character. So clearly, fans are taking notice. A 1,750% increase in copies sold over the last week. And we have to keep in mind that there's a variant cover by Becky Cloonan. It was a 1 in 25 featuring Olive Silverlock that is going for $90 right now. Now we're at number 9 on the list. We got the Devil Woman making her way on here. Mercy Sparks, issue number 0. This book's seeing $20 average sales and a high sale. For a raw copy at $50 for a near mint. This comic book is about a devil woman that was cast out of hell. She was too much of a badass, causing too much of a ruckus down under. And she was brought up and banished to live a life on earth disguised as a human. But you know what? She became a bounty hunter and she got hired by heaven to take out rogue angels. And this is now coming to a screen. 1,900% increase in copies sold. And if you were paying attention to Key Collector's spec deck, not this year, not last year, but in the fall of 2018, Key Collector put this book on the spec deck and was validated in January of 2019 that this book had been picked up for production. Well, now in October of 2020, we have confirmation that MGM is producing it. So you know what? If you don't have this app, sign up, use code TOM101 for one free week. There's no way you're going to get this information any other way. The spec deck is filled with comic books worth considering, but they're not on the trending list yet. They're not on the hot list yet because once they are validated and we get this type of information, that's when they cross over. Right. Stay up with the comic market, download Key Collector, and tell them about number eight. Number eight on the list, we have Wonder Woman Annual 4. Now, this is a recent book, but it's already going for $15 raw with a $30 high sale. 1,200% increase in copies sold this week. Now, DC is letting us know that since they finally wrapped up Joker War, they have a new crossover happening called 
future state. This takes place in the far-off year of 2030, and in that year, we know there is a brand new Wonder Woman, Yara Floor. We're getting a new Wonder Woman. That's pretty exciting. And that's not all. There's going to be a lot of new characters in the future and versions of established characters that we're going to be reintroduced to, which is going to be pretty fun. Now, we also have word from the Superman editor who said the following. Yara does have some connection to the Amazons. And part of what we'll discover in her origin is what activates her position. What makes her Wonder Woman at this time? She's from Brazil but was an immigrant to America. A new Wonder Woman from Brazil in the future. Could she have been already introduced in DC Comics? Well, that's why we're talking about Wonder Woman Annual 4 today. And aside from riding a great white shark in this issue, Russ, what do we find out? We find out that there is a third tribe of advanced warrior women sweeping in from the south in times of need with might and science. But on the final panel, we see two young girls who happen to be playing with jump ropes. One seems to be suspiciously good at swinging a lasso. A third lost civilization found. How exciting. And this isn't where the spec ends because we went over to Twitter to DC Brazil Mm -hmm. and they've been posting this page all week since the (laughs) announcement about this Wonder Woman. This right here just became spec of choice and I'm pretty pumped about it. They know something we don't know, Tom. Now at number seven, kind of foreshadowing this last week, we have TMNT issue number 110, the one in 10 variant because of a preview inside. So the Ben Bates 1 in 10 variant was not really on anyone's radar. No one was really paying a whole lot of attention to TMNT number 110 because everyone's been talking about The Last Ronin. And last week when we were talking about The Last Ronin, we had information that IDW was shorting and Diamond was allocating orders. So a lot of people across the country are not going to be able to get first print copies of The Last Ronin. That was big news. That was something that's happening. IDW rushed back to print a second print of number one with a different coloring. And you know people aren't going to be very happy about that. But we find out this week that in the last four pages of TMNT 110, we get an actual preview of The Last Ronin. It is in color. It is gorgeous. It is worth reading. I got goosebumps when I saw it, and I was shocked because I'm going, oh, there's a one in 10 of this that no one was thinking about. I know exactly what you're feeling, man. And comic fam, spoiler warning, but this is a preview, so I think it's fair game. But there's a lot of people who didn't get this comic and want to see these four pages. We see The Last Ronin still don't know who he is, and you're following him in a dystopian future. You can't even go into the water in this version of America Mm -hmm. because of how polluted it is. It is dark. It is horrific. And... I was getting kind of a Batman, you know, Alfred in his ear vibe at the start of this preview because he's talking to somebody. He's just kind of working out the process of his journey with someone in his ear. And I'm thinking this is kind of cool, kind of going dark night with it. But you find out at the end that he's talking to his dead brothers. This turtle is insane. (laughs) I have to read this. Next week when Last Ronin comes out, people are going to be all over this book and it's going to be tough to find. But if you want the first preview, you got to pick up 110. Just hit this week, $35 average sales and highs of $50. We've been talking about Last Ronin for months now after the ash can was released and really with the hype and with the allocation of Last Ronin number one, The community really seems to be getting behind this book. These are four actual pages from The Last Ronin. Makes sense to me. Number six on the list, we have Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme number one. Now it's selling for $8 average sale with a $10 high raw sale, which doesn't seem like a lot, but there could be some headroom on this book. That's right, especially when you see that there was a lot of 18 copies that sold for $20 in the last week. Whoa. Yeah, not a whole lot of people buying this book, but it does feature the first appearance of the demon rider perfecting her use of magic so much to an extent that she becomes sorcerer supreme this is a character you don't want to mess with and we also know that marvel indigenous voices a new issue is going to be coming out pretty soon highlighting a lot of fantastic characters and creatives for native american month in november we have jeffrey Varegi, who does this classic pacific northwest style of native american art that's incorporating this character and that's not all that's happening soon with this sorcerer supreme we also have word that early next year we are going to see a solo series featuring the same character 
All right, more reason to be watching this character. Clearly, Marvel is excited to utilize her, and her character design is so cool. I'm excited to see how she's utilized in the Marvel comic universe. Number five on the list, we have The Boys, Dear Becky, number one, the Raf Cursetti variant. That's right, the white background variant. This one's brand new, limited to 3,000 copies. Average sales hitting that $45 marker, and... A 1,500% increase in copies sold in just one week, and I think it's because the boys' fandom is hit an all-new height after season two. Well, people are really, really liking the Homelander, Tom, and the fact that Raf Garcetti did such an amazing cover for this, and they have reused it a few different times with the Homelander as the focal piece, but changed the background is making this even more collectible. Shout out to Scorpion Comics bringing this book into existence courtesy of the art director of God of War. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when this book landed earlier this year, it sold out quick because the original cover that was released was only a print count of 300 there was a second version that was released fourth of july week it was the fourth of july american flag variant mm -hmm. that had 56 copies printed that are only in existence because that's the number of individuals who signed the declaration of independence wow. how freaking cool is that that is very cool tom all right so hide them from nick cage <laughs> and get all of your homelander variants and shout out to that carla cohen cover this thing's available and it is stunning the boys became the biggest superhero television franchise this year and comic book adaptation who would have thought? Definitely not I, Tom. And you know what? Amazon has been hitting it out of the park on this one. But for people who missed out on number one, we happen to have a giveaway featuring three separate variants of The Boys. Dear Becky, number one, covers all by Derek Robertson. We have the black and white, the no trade dress, and the sketch variant. This is a 1 in 25, a 1 in 20, and a 1 in 10. And you can win these if you like, subscribe, comment down below, letting us know what you think of The Boys TV show. Thank you so much, Dynamite. We appreciate your support of the show. Number four on the list, movie news? Oh my what? gosh, dude. The Shout out Boom Studios. They did it, dude. Tell the community what happened this week. Oh my gosh. So Empty Man, the movie, is being released this week. And while Tom and I can't figure out any movie theaters in our state within a couple hundred miles that we can go to and see it, Empty Man is being released. And this is an amazing accomplishment for Boom Studios. Congratulations to them. All right, this right here is a comic book we've been chatting about for over a year. We knew it was coming, but we didn't realize that it was happening in October. The trailer dropped over the last week and a half. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Ross Ritchie, CEO of Boom Studios, posting online the very beginning of the movie. Nothing copyrighted, no worries. The Boom Studios intro. This right here marks the first company to do a comic book introduction to a movie other than Marvel and DC. Now, this is really, really cool. Empty Man number one, number four on the list this week. $20 averages, 100 bucks for a CBCS 9.8. Clearly, the community is excited for some psychological horror, and that's what this is. We're seeing a 1,500% increase in copies sold in seven days. And again, it's because of the movie that's been released. Now, Tom and I have talked about this before. Cullen Bunn is a fantastic writer, and we knew that this was going to get traction, and it's just great to see this on the list. The story about an illness that takes its subjects from psychosis and puts them into a full category catatonic state throughout the pages of this book. But that's not all. This actually shows where the CDC teams up with the FBI to stop an evil cult from spreading the disease. But here's the thing. I'm not seeing that in the preview, and that's what I brought up to Ross Ritchie, who responded with this being a prequel to the comic book that Colin Bunn approved of. Nice. That's good to hear, comic fam. What do you think about this news? And let's chat about number three on the list. Number three on the list, we have Icon number one. Now, this is part of the DC Milestone imprint that came out in the early 1990s. We are seeing the first appearance of Static Shock in comic books. Ooh, is it a first appearance? Because this comic book has a three-page preview inside showing some shots from the comic and introducing us to this new character, Static. This once dollar bin book is now selling for $15 average with a high $30 raw sale. It's polybagged, so you know it's going to be condition sensitive and you want to find it in the bag, but it's an over 1,000% increase 
over last week's copy sold. Now, we've been chatting about people investing a lot in static appearances, and this week it hit its all-time high, and we're going to get to that later on the list. But this conversation right here has to be about the preview appearance because we've seen previews make their way onto the trending list multiple mm -hmm. times over this last year, and every single time community is a little meh about it you know it's like should this be a key comic should it not be and what were we just chatting about earlier on this list when we were chatting about tmnt 110 the preview appearance of the last ronin clearly collectors favor this appearance because it matters but whether it's a first appearance whether it's a full appearance whether it's a cameo what level of cameo all these things matter to collectors and they're becoming more and more important to consider especially because whether you like it or not Books are spiking. And when dollar books go for $1 to $15 on average, the community is speaking. Now, we have to keep in mind that in hardware number four, also from Milestone Comics, there is the same three-page static preview, but it also predates static number one. But it came out a month after Icon number one. <laughs> so buckle up, comic fam. We have some comics to consider. And let's chat about number two on this list. Number two on the list, we have Agents of Atlas number one. Now, this book has been popping for a while now because there are so many first appearances in this book. We have Arrow, we have Swordmaster, we have Silk, we have Wave. There's a bunch of really great Asian superheroes as well as appearances of Amadeus Cho and Shang-Chi. And I think that's why this book has been moving so fast. So clearly people have been specking on this book for a long time and to remind everybody that back in May 2019, we were reporting courtesy a key collector that Marvel and NetEast announced a collaboration to develop games, comics, and TV shows for the Chinese market and beyond. So there is a lot of reason to spec on these new characters. Mm -hmm. Some are even comparing this to the giant size of this time. Right. And right now we're seeing copies sell to such an extent that we had to put this at number two, but there is no other big reason to put money behind it besides people really believing in this team. So $15 raw sale for this book. We are seeing CGC 9.8s go for 100. Someone even had a lot of five different CGC 9.8s go for $345. Clearly a spec move buying mm -hmm. five 9.8s. That right there is telling. But you know, now that I say that there isn't much that's happening in regards to the new agents of Atlas, we do have a lot of people who are very hyped about Master of Kung Fu, you were just talking about Shang-Chi. Right, the, the new Shang-Chi miniseries came out and a lot of people are really liking it. It's a great story so far and I've already got a bunch of people ordering number two, number three, number four. And this very week, Marvel announced a Lady Deathstrike versus Shang-Chi one-shot that's coming out. And the writer Wong, this is what he had to say about it. I'm stoked to write Shang-Chi. My first introduction to the character was in War of the Realms, new agent of Atlas written by Greg Pak. Only giving more reason for why the comic is being purchased in mass by the community. Clearly, this run has influenced even Marvel writers. Before we get to the number one on the list that is no shock to anybody, Tom's going to tell you about the mystery mail call. That's right. Our comic book subscription service where you support the show, but we also send you comics every month. And every month we put love in there. Comic books, you know, modern, sometimes bronze, sometimes even silver and key books. But there is a guaranteed book that goes into every one. And this month, it's Power Rangers 55, first appearance of the new Green Ranger. And it's a variant cover artist by Raf Grissetti. We were just chatting about him. So we are so excited to have this Power Rangers variant here, but this is the first time we've done a collaboration and we are collaborating with Eris over at Variant Comics to get this Raf Garcetti beautiful book into each of the subscribers' hands, the mystery mail call. It is a mail call exclusive, but it will have the Variant logo on the back accompanying the Comic Toms. Comic Fam, link in the description to join and hit them with that static news. Number one on the list, we have static number one, cover A. <laughs> Is that what we're going to call this book? We are, Tom, because <laughs> there a. are four different covers on this book. True, true. And we're going to try and discern between these. There's less confusion. So cover A is the main cover, no poly bag. If you got it graded, it's a cover A. Cover B is the main cover in the poly bag. Sealed, right? It's in that bag. That's how it was originally that was distributed. That's how it was originally released. Now, cover C is a blue cover with different art that's a newsstand variant. And cover D is the platinum version. It's got the original cover with the orange sunburst background, but the letters are silver. 
That's right. Know your static issues because we're talking about cover A right now out of the poly bag hitting $65 average sales. And can you believe it? 9.8 hitting $400. Wow. I just cannot believe that this book is so, but there must be some type of news, right, Tom? Dude, when you get Killmonger, who's going to bring Electro to the WB franchise at DC, I mean, heck, man, we got to perfect storm we really do and this is great because static is such an amazing character and the fact that michael b jordan is tied to this right now and we're gonna get a movie it's so good all right so it's not just michael b jordan too like let's back this up a little bit because we were chatting since dc fandom after it was announced by reginald hudlin a surprise DC panel where he said that there were bringing static shock to the screen. It was in development and they were revitalizing DC's imprint. And he was going to be doing a graphic novel as well as digital stuff. This gentleman being involved mattered then, which is why this book started gaining ground months ago. Mm -hmm. But now with Michael B. Jordan attached, it's hit all new heights. So Reginald Hudlin may not be a household name, but he should be. He is an Oscar-nominated director, and he was the president of BET from 2005 to 2008. You know what? That might not sound very interesting, but he happened to write the Black Panther run where Takala and Storm got married. I mean, this guy has been doing stuff in comic books for a very long time. He co-produced Django Unchained with Jamie Foxx. He is on the board of the Comic Book League Defense Fund, and he directed Marshall, which starred Chadwick Boseman. This guy knows what he's doing, and when he speaks, you better listen. This right here is the next Kevin Feige. I'm calling it right now, and this book is so respected in the comic book community. I got so pumped, man. When I saw the news, I didn't care that these were dollar bin comics spiking. I want static on the screen, and this right here opens the doors to so many characters from the Milestone universe. What a week, comic book fam. So many surprises on this list that we were really not prepared for. But as always, like, subscribe, comment down below. Win a chance to get this Dear Becky comic book. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Oh, and we got other videos for you to check out. I was thinking about recommending this one, but I'm actually going to recommend this one. But if you don't want to watch that one, you should probably watch that one.